Hey guys, this is Joe Metalone, and today we're going to take a look at creating an Angular loading indicator. Uh, something on the screen that lets the end user know we're loading some data uh, prior to rendering our view. Uh, so we're just going to jump right in here. I'm going to make a directory called loader, jump into that directory, and then I'm going to use Bower to install Angular, Angular, and uh, go ahead and throw in Bootstrap CSS. And so that's installing now. And whoops, you know what? Bootstrap is not spelled that way. Bootstrap CSS. Okay. That is now installed. So let's go ahead and load that up in Sublime. And let me get that onto the screen properly. And we're going to make a new document. We're going to save that as index.index.html. And okay, we're going to set up our HTML5 doc, and we're going to go ahead and drop in our CSS and our uh, Angular. And it doesn't look like Angular made it there, so let's copy that, paste that in there. We're going to drop this forward uh, leading forward slash, and I'm not sure why we don't have Angular, but let's go ahead and run that again. I think. Uh, when I messed up the, the bootstrap command, it, it messed up the uh, Angular command as well. So install Angular. Should see that show up here in a second. There we go. We've got Angular. And let's go ahead and grab that. Copy as tag script. And we're going to drop that in right here. And again, we're going to get rid of that leading forward slash. Okay, so we've got our Angular, we've got our bootstrap, let's go ahead and wire this thing up. Equals, we'll call our application app, and then in our body, let's go ahead and drop in a uh, initial controller, and we'll just call that my controller. Okay, so let's go ahead and start building our app. So again, we called our module app, and into that we are going to inject nothing. We're going to create our controller, which is going to be called my controller. And into that we are going to inject uh, scope and uh, HTTP. And so here is our function, scope and HTTP. <clears throat> and tab this out. All right, so what we want to do is load some data. Uh, of course, I am going to use uh, fill text for this. So, um, and we're going to get 10 rows of data, and we're going to say, F name is uh, first name, and then of course we need to add in our callback. Then on the success of that call, we are going to assign our data to a variable called uh, people. So now we've got this uh, data. Uh, that we've uh, uh, put into this variable called people and so up here let's drop in an unordered list and then we'll throw in a repeater repeat equals uh, person in people and then what we'll output is the person's first name all right so let's go to run that we should get an unordered list of random people's first names uh, so let's load that up, and we've got all these names here. Awesome. Okay, so uh, one cool thing about fill text is there is a feature called delay, and what that'll do is it'll delay the data by however many seconds you pass it. So I'm, I'm saying that I want to delay the return of the data by five seconds. So let me refresh that, and now we can see it's taking about five seconds for the data to come back. Now, uh, I'm emulating that right now. I'm, I'm faking that delay. But in your real-time application, 
you are going to have situations where data doesn't load up in one second or five seconds or whatever. It might take some time to get that data back from the server. Uh, so what would be nice here is if I refresh that, it'd be nice if there was something here that said, hey, we're loading the data, uh, wait just a moment or whatever. Uh, so one way we can do that, and there's lots of different ways we can do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap uh, my controller in this. Uh, technically, it would probably be a view that I'm loading other controllers in. I'm going to wrap that in an outer controller. So I'm going to call that uh, app controller. So now I'm going to go ahead and create that controller. Uh, app controller. And into that, I'm only going to inject scope. Uh, obviously, you can treat it just like any other controller. So scope. Whoops, scope. OK, so um, and there's a typo there. So AngularJS contains uh, like a pub sub system, a, a broadcast system. Um, and so from one controller to another, I could broadcast something uh, to, I think, technically the root scope, and then the other controllers can pick it up. I'm not 100% on that, uh, but basically I can broadcast something. And uh, this is a great way to handle custom events. Uh, so the way I do that is scope uh, on, and then I pass in what the event is or what the thing is. So I'm going to call this load. And then um, here, so I'm going to pass in the scope. And I'm just going to say scope dot uh, loading equals true. That means I'm loading something. Uh, and then on the next one, I'm going to say unload. And I'm going to say loading equals false. OK, so now I've got this event that I can call from my other controller. Uh, so in my controller, as soon as we start to, uh, right before the, the JSON call, I'm going to say scope dot uh, emit, and then you just say what you want to admit. So I'm going to say load there, and then when we've got our data, I'm going to say unload. And then inside of my app controller, I'm going to drop a div in here, and what I'm going to do is uh, throw in some bootstrap here. So class equals alert and alert.info, which really just changes the color, no big deal. So now I've got this uh, div up there at the top that's going to be an alert. And what I'm going to do is use the ng show directive. And I'm going to say the show is dependent on the value of loading. So whether or not that is true or false. Uh, so now when I run this, we should get, uh, we're not getting it. So, so it's waiting the five seconds to load the data. Uh, I'm going to jump back to my uh, ch -ch -ch uh, code here and see what the heck I did wrong. So it's inside the app controller, called it app controller, I've got the, uh, the scope, ch -ch -ch -ch. I'm emitting, and I'm missing something. So I'm going to pause here for a second and look at this for a minute. Ah, so uh, we don't actually need to pass in scope as an argument here. Uh, and that's that's what's causing the issue. So I'm going to go ahead and reload that. So now when we reload, we've got this nice little loading bar, whatever. Obviously, you know, we could dress this up quite a bit more. And then once the data loads, that information uh, disappears, that loading uh, indicator. So loading and unloading after the five second delay. So there you go. That's a quick way to create a AngularJS loading indicator.